Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Moshmi Das and today I'm going to be talking about a new topic on the lymphatic levels in the neck. Now, why do we need to know this? That's because uh, as every medical student, as every clinician out there, we need to know the different levels all the lymph nodes in the neck can be divided into. This is very important in making a diagnosis of a lot of things. And not only that, but it's also going to help you get through a lot of viva exams, your UG and your PG exams. So this is a very, very, very important topic. Now, let's start a class. So today, we will be discussing about lymphatics of the neck. So how do we divide the lymphatic system, which is draining all the structures present in the neck? It can be divided into superficial and deep systems. Now, as it is already explanatory from its name, the superficial lymphatics are those ones which are draining the skin. And after it has drained the skin, it perforates the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia and slowly from then onwards it drains into the deep lymphatic system, which we will be studying about next. So, if we had to know what is the surgical importance, why do we really need to know about the superficial lymphatics? It's because whenever there is a malignancy in this region, the lymph nodes will quickly invade the skin and therefore it will become very necessary to do a skin resection to ensure that a complete excision of the malignancy has been done. So that is why the superficial lymphatics is important for us. So next, what we will be talking about mostly today will be the deep lymphatic system. So the deep lymphatic system is basically the ones which are associated with the fascial condensations. These are the ones which are lying in close proximity with vessels, nerves and the muscles of the neck. And this is what we will be discussing in great details today, how we are dividing the deep lymphatic system. So we are dividing them into different lymph node levels as per the AAOHNS. This helps to differentiate nodal areas that are draining the different visceral structures which are found in the head and neck. So there are all total seven levels of lymph nodes in the deep lymphatic system. So let's start with the first one. So there is a level one. So level one has been divided again into level 1A and level 1B. So I will be mostly telling you about the boundaries of the levels and what lymph nodes lie in those levels and which are the structures which are being trained by that particular level. So first is level 1A. It is the single midline zone. As you can see over here, this over here is level 1A. So this level 1A it is corresponding to the submental triangle of the neck. Well, the submental triangle it is bounded as you can see this is this here is the anterior belly of the digastric muscle. This here this level over here is uh, the hyoid bone and this over here is the midline. So this is forming the submental triangle on if, if you include uh, both the sides symmetrically, it is totally together forming the submental triangle. So this is level 1A and this level has the submental lymph nodes and the submental lymph nodes, they are responsible for draining the anterior floor of mouth, the lower lip and the ventral aspect of the tongue. Next comes level 1B. The level 1B is located in the submandibular triangle and as you can see over here the one which is bordered in red over here is the submandibular triangle and it is as you can see it is bound by the anterior belly of digastric and over here is the posterior belly of digastric and this is the lower border of the mandible so th this these three structures they are forming the submandibular triangle and they themselves contain the submandibular lymph node. Now what are the structures that they are draining? They are draining the lateral aspect of the tongue, rest of the floor of the mouth and the buccal cavity. So level 1A was draining anterior floor of the mouth and the rest of the floor of the mouth is drained by 1B. Level 1A was uh, draining the ventral aspect of the tongue and level 1B is draining the lateral aspect of the tongue. 
Next comes level 2. So, what is this level 2? Level 2 is basically it is located as the uppermost nodes of the jugular chain which is extending from the skull base to the level of the inferior border of the hyoid bone. So, if you see here in this picture, this the, the structure which is marked in red over here, this is the level 2 lymph nodes. As you can see, it is extending from this level of the skull base and going to the level of the hyoid bone. This is the upper most part of the jugular chain of lymph nodes. So, these lymph nodes, they are responsible for draining the oral cavity, the nasopharynx, hypopharynx or the larynx, hypopharynx, the larynx and the parotid glands and also it is the first achelon lymph nodes of the oropharynx. Now, lymph nodes from the submandibular and the retropharyngeal lymph nodes, they join the jugular, the jugular system at the junctional nodal area which is basically the part which is lying at the lower aspect of the level 2 lymph nodes. So, these are the drainage areas of the level 2 lymph nodes. Now, uh, interestingly the level 2 lymph nodes they can be subdivided into two parts level 2a and 2b. This division is basically done by the spinal accessory nerve. So, the level 2a lymph nodes as you can see in this picture over here are the one that lies caudal to the spinal accessory no nerve and presence of nodal disease in the level 2a it mandates the dissection of level 2b during that dissection and uh, as we saw that level 2a was caudal to spinal accessory nerve the level 2b is the part that lies cranial to the spinal accessory nerve this is also known as the suarez triangle after the Argentinian who first described functional neck dissection in the 1960s. This is basically a triangular area with apex at the junction of the posterior border of the uh, sternocleidomastoid and the posterior belly of digastric and it is bounded inferiorly by the spinal accessory nerve. So, you see here this part over here is the level 2B which is lying cranial to the spinal accessory nerve and the part ahead of it is level 2a. So, this is all about the level 2. Next comes the level 3. So, the level 3 is basically the ones which are forming the middle part of the jugular, uh, jugular chain of lymph nodes and it is extending from the level of the inferior border of the hyoid to the inferior border of the cricoid. If you want to see in the picture over here, this part marked in red is the level 3. So, this is the level of the hyoid bone and it is continuing to the level of the cricoid cartilage. And it is draining mostly the lower areas of the oropharynx, the hypopharynx and the larynx. And lastly, after level 3 is the lowest part of the jugular chain which is the level 4. The structure marked here in blue is the level 4 lymph nodes. So, this extends from the level of the inferior border of the cricoid to the level of the clavicle over here. So, this part is forming the level 4 lymph nodes and they are it is responsible for draining the hypopharynx and the larynx. Lower in the level 4 in the chasnix triangle in the root of neck, the lymph node meds may occur from an infi infraclavicular primary source typically the bronchus or the breast. And there is also something another uh, another particular group of lymph nodes you need to know which is known as the Virchow's nodes. The Virchow's nodes is basically a supraclavicular lymph node metastasis which occurs from an upper GIT malignancy and it is located in the level 4 in the left side of the neck. So, this is only present on the left side of the neck these are one particular group group of lymph nodes which is very prominent in upper GIT malignancies they are a group of supraclavicular lymph nodes only located on the left side of the neck. So, this ends the level 3 and the level 4 and along with level 2 these, of, these have been forming the jugular chain of lymph nodes. Next comes the level 5. So, if the level 5 
it is located as basically the posterior triangle. So, the ante in this case the anterior limit is the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and the posterior limit is the anterior border of the trapezius. So, if you were to see over here the anterior limit uh, here is the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and the posterior limit is the anterior border of the trapezius. So, the part which is lying in between this is a posterior triangle and posterior triangle is the one which houses the level 5 lymph nodes. So, the drainage of this uh, this uh, this is this level is basically responsible for draining from all the other nodal areas. It is a common location for metastatic involvement from nasopharyngeal or cutaneous scalp primary lesions. Now, level five again it can be divided into a level five A and a five B by an imaginary horizontal line at the level of the inferior border of the cricoid cartilage. As you see over here, this was the level of the uh, cricoid cartilage. If you were to draw an imaginary horizontal line, this is dividing it into a level 5a and 5b. So, what is 5a? 5a is basically the area which is above the imaginary line. It contains lymph node which is related to the spinal accessory nerve and the level 5b is the area which is below the boundary line as you can see over here and this contains lymph nodes which are related to the transverse cervical artery and the supraclavicular lymph nodes. So, this is all about the posterior triangle lymph nodes level 5 which has been divided into 5a and 5b by a horizontal line which is drawn at the level of the low margin of the cricoid cartilage. Next we come on to the level 6. Level 6 is a single midline zone. It is also known as the anterior or the central compartment of lymph nodes and it is located between the two common carotid arteries on either side. Superiorly it is bounded by the inferior border of the hyoid and inferiorly it is bounded by the inanimate artery on both the sides. So, this uh, over here you can see this is level 6. This uh, on both sides it is a single compartment, central compartment. It is aligned on both sides by the common carotid arteries and its upper superior border is formed by the hyoid bone whereas the lower border is being formed by the inanimate artery on both the sides. Now, this region it is responsible for draining the paratracheal, perithyroid and precricoid lymph nodes. Precricoid is also known as the Delphian lymph nodes. This is also another specific name that you have to remember. The nodal meds here they may arise from primaries in the thyroid, the glottis, subglottic larynx, apex of the py uh, pyriform fossa and the cervical esophagus. Also in this region we can find the parathyroid glands. So, what is the importance of this level 6? Lymph node dissection of this compartment is done in conjunction with the total thyroidectomy or total laryngectomy and it may result in post-op hypocalcemia because of the inadvertent removal of the parathyroid glands which are located in this nodal region. So, what we learn from here is that the level 6 is also where the parathyroid glands are located. So, when we are doing a uh, lymph node dissection of the central compartment in these two surgeries, we end up with a complication of post-op, post-operative hypocalcemia because the parathyroid glands get removed in the process. And lastly, we come on to level 7. Now, what is the level 7? Level 7 is basically the lymph nodes of the superior mediastinum. They help in draining the thyroid, the subglottis, trachea and the cervical esophagus. Also we find the thymic remnant over here. So, if you are to see the picture over here, here lies the level 7 lymph nodes or the lymph nodes of the superior mediastinum and it is mostly draining. The structure is located at that level which is the thyroid, subglottis, trachea and cervical esophagus. 
So this completes up all the levels of the lymph node that you need to know about. So what, you, what mostly you have to be learning about are the boundaries of these levels, what are the structures which are being drained by this level. This is very very important for you to know because in any malignancy of any part of the head and neck you have to know which is the lymphatic level which will be involved because you have to do a neck dissection according to that. So that completes our topic today. If you have liked my class today, please, please, please share with your friends and subscribe to my channel and I will be seeing you in my next video.